it's time for chapter two of George's Marvellous Medicine and this chapter is called The Marvellous Plan. George sat himself down at the table in the kitchen. He was shaking a little. How he hated Grandma. He really hated that horrid old witchy woman. All of a sudden he had a tremendous urge to do something about her. Something whopping, something absolutely terrific. A real shocker, sort of explosion. He wanted to blow away that witchy smell that hung about her in the next room. He may have only been eight years old, but he was a very brave little boy. He was ready to take this woman on. I'm not going to be frightened by her, he thought to himself. But he was frightened, and that's why he suddenly wanted to explode her away. Well, not quite away, but he did want to shake the old woman up a bit. Very well then. What would it be, this whopping, terrific, exploding shocker for Grandma? He would have liked to have put a firework banger under her chair, but he didn't have one. He would have liked to have put a long green snake down the back of her dress, but he didn't have a long green snake. He would have liked to have put six big black rats in the room with her and then locked the door, but he didn't have six big black rats. As George sat there pondering this interesting problem, his eye fell upon the bottle of Grandma's brown medicine standing on the sideboard. Oh, rotten stuff it seemed to be. Four times a day, a large spoonful of it was shoveled into her mouth and it didn't do her the slightest bit of good. She was always just as horrid after as she had been before. The whole point of medicine surely was to make a person better. If it didn't do that, then it was quite useless. George thought suddenly, <laughs> I know exactly what I'll do. I'll make her a new medicine, one that is so strong and so fierce and so fantastic it will either cure her completely or blow the top off of her head. I'll make her a magic medicine, a medicine no doctor in the world has ever made before. George looked at the kitchen clock. It said five past ten. There was nearly an hour left before Grandma's next dose was due at 11. Here we go then, cried George, jumping up from the table. A magic medicine it will be. So give me a bug and a jumping flea. Give me two snails and a lizard's three. A slimy squiggler from the sea. And the poisonous sting of a bumblebee. And the juice from a fruit of the juju tree. And a powdered bone of wombat's knee. One hundred other things as well, each with a rather nasty smell. I'll stir them up, I'll boil them long, a mixture tough, a mixture strong. And then, oh, down it goes, a nice big spoonful, hold your nose. Just gulp it down and have no fear. How do you like it, Granny dear? Will she go pop? Will she explode? Will she go flying down the road? Will she go poof in a puff of smoke? Will she start fizzing like a can of coke? Who knows? Not I. Let's wait and see. I'm glad it's neither you or me. Oh, Grandma, if you only knew what I have in store for you. <laughs> Chapter three. George begins to make the medicine. George took an enormous saucepan out of the cupboard and placed it on the kitchen table. George! came the shrill voice from the next room. What are you doing? Uh, nothing, Grandma, he called out. You needn't think I can't hear you just because you closed the door. You're rattling saucepans. I'm just tidying in the kitchen, Grandma. Then there was silence. George had absolutely no doubts whatsoever about how he was going to make his famous medicine. He wasn't going to fool about wondering whether to put a little bit of this or a little bit of that. Quite simply, he was going to put in everything he could find. There would be no messing about. No hesitating and no wondering whether a particular thing would knock the girl sideways or not. The rule would be this. Whatever he saw, if it was runny or powdery or gooey, in it went. Nobody had ever made a medicine quite like that before. If it didn't actually cure Grandma, then it would anyway cause some exciting results. It would be worth watching. George decided to work his way around the various rooms one at a time to see what they had to offer. He would first go to the bathroom. 
There were always lots of funny things in the bathroom, so upstairs he went, carrying the two enormous saucepans before him. In the bathroom, he gazed longingly at the famous and dreaded medicine cupboard, but he didn't go near it. It was the only thing in the entire house he was forbidden to touch. He'd made solemn promises to his parents about this and he wasn't going to break them. There were things in there, they had told him, that could actually kill a person. And although he was out to give Grandma a pretty fiery mouthful, he didn't really want a dead body on his hands. George put the saucepan on the floor and went to work. Number one was a bottle labelled Golden Gloss Hair Shampoo. He emptied it into the pan. That ought to wash her tummy nice and clean, he said. He took the full tube of toothpaste and squeezed out the whole lot in one long worm. Maybe that will brighten up those horrid brown teeth of hers, he thought. There was an aerosol can of super foam shaving soap. This belonged to his father. George loved playing with aerosols. He pressed the button and kept his finger on it until there was nothing left. A wonderful mountain of white foam built up in the giant saucepan. With his fingers, he scooped out the contents of a jar named Vitamin Enriched Face Cream. In went a bottle of scarlet nail varnish. If the toothpaste doesn't clean her teeth, George said, then this will paint them as red as roses. He found another jar of creamy stuff labelled Hair remover, smear it on your legs, it said, and allow to remain for five minutes. George tipped it all in the saucepan. There was a bottle of yellow stuff inside called Dishworth's Famous Dandruff Cure. In it went. There was something else called Brillident for cleaning false teeth. It was a white powder. In it went too. He found another aerosol, Never, ma never more poking deodorant spray, guaranteed, it said, to keep away unpleasant bodily smells for a whole day. She could use plenty of that, George said as he sprayed the entire can into the saucepan. Liquid paraffin, the next one was called. It was a big bottle. He didn't have the faintest idea what it did to you, so poured it in anyway. That, he thought, looking around him, was about all he could get from the bathroom. On his mother's dressing table in the bedroom, George found yet another lovely aerosol can. It was called Helga's Hair Set. Hold 12 inches away from the hair and spray lightly. He squirted the whole lot into the saucepan. He did enjoy squirting aerosols. There was a bottle of perfume called Flowers of Turnips. It smelt like old cheese. In it went. And in two went a large round box of powder. It was called pink plaster. There was a powder puff on top. He threw that in there as well for luck. He found a couple of lipsticks. He pulled the greasy red things out of their cases and add them to the mixture. The bedroom had nothing more to offer. So George carried the enormous saucepan downstairs again and trotted into the laundry room where the shelves were full of all kinds of household items. The first one he took down was a large box of super white for automatic washing machines. Dirt, it said, will disappear like magic. George didn't know whether grandma was automatic or not, but she was certainly a dirty old woman. So she'd better have it all, he said, tipping in the whole box full. Then there was a big tin of white waxwell floor polish. It removes filth and foul messes from your floor and leaves everything shiny bright, it said. George scooped the orangey coloured waxy stuff out of the tin and plonked it in the pan. There was a round cardboard curtain, carton labelled flea powder for dogs. Keep well away from the dog's food, it said, because if this powder, if eaten, will make the dog explode. Good, said George, pouring the whole thing in the saucepan. He found a box of canary seeds on the shelf. <laughs> Perhaps this will make the old bird sing, he said, and in it went. Next, George explored the box with the shoe cleaning materials, brushes and tins and dusters. Well now, he thought, Grandma's medicine is brown, so my medicine must also be brown or she'll smell a rat. The way to colour it, he decided, would be with brown shoe polish. 
The large tin he chose was labelled dark tan. Splendid. He scooped it all out with an old spoon and plopped it in the pan. He would stir it up later. On his way back to the kitchen, George saw a bottle of gin standing on the sideboard. Grandma was very fond of gin. She was allowed to have a small tipple every evening. Now he would give her a treat. He would pour in the whole bottle, which he did. Back in the kitchen, George put the saucepan on the table and went over the cupboard that served as a larder. The shelves were bulging with bottles and jars of every sort. He chose the following and emptied them one by one into the saucepan. A tin of curry powder, a tin of mustard powder, a tin of extra hot chilli sauce, a tin of black peppercorns, a bottle of horseradish sauce. There, he said aloud, that'll do it. George, came a screechy voice from the next room. Who are you talking to in there? Mm, what are you up to? Nothing, Grandma, absolutely nothing, he called back. Is it time for my medicine yet? Uh, no, Grandma, not for about another half an hour. Well, just see you don't forget it. I won't, Grandma, George answered. I promise I won't. <laughs> Night-night.